Hello, today I'm going to show you how I tune one of these duplexers using this Rigel DSA815 spectrum analyzer with built-in tracking generator. And as we tune this up, what we're going to do is we're going to dial our, our signal generator into 465.175 megahertz and we're going to notch that transmit frequency out of our receive side and we're going to, then we'll dial up 460.175 megahertz and we're going to notch our receive frequency out of the transmit side. And uh, hit preset here, you can see this is how the device comes when you boot it up. These small duplexers are notch type filters. This particular unit has a transmit frequency of 465.175 megahertz and a receive frequency of 460.175 megahertz, 5 megahertz spread. Receive frequency is going to be the lower side and the transmit frequency the higher side. To get started here, I'm going to uh, dial in my transmit frequency. I'm going to notch my transmit frequency out of my receive side. So in this case, my transmit frequency is 465.175 megahertz. And I'm going to set up a span to begin with here of about, say, 5 megahertz. Now, I'm going to be using the tracking generator. I'm going to generate a signal, and I'm going to insert that into the antenna port, and I'm going to detect that signal at the receive port, because I'm tuning the transmit frequency out of my receive side. And as I set my tracking generator up here, tracking generator defaults to minus 20 dBm, and I know that I'm going to want that to be zero, get some power out. And also, if I go to the amplitude setting here, this has a default 10 dB of attenuation on this detector port. I want to take that attenuation out, that 0 dB of attenuation. That allows me to get more power down here and a lower noise floor. I'm also going to have to uh, manually control the resolution bandwidth. As I change the span and some other functions, this machine will continue to automatically keep the resolution bandwidth to give me about a 10 millisecond sweep time. In order to narrow the resolution bandwidth and get a little more uh, detail in down the bottom of the noise floor, I can slow down that resolution bandwidth, take a smaller sample, get less average signal strength in each sample and a little bit lower noise floor. It does cost me a, a higher amount of time uh, per sweep. About a half second to one second is it's okay for, for tuning and working with there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that tracking generator on. Check my power level coming out of my tracking generator is at zero. I don't have any input attenuation. And I'm going to connect my signal generator now to my antenna port. And I'm going to connect my detector here to my receive port. And I'm going to need to put this 50 ohm termination on this open port. This happens to be a bird 5 watt 50 ohm load. And we need to have that for impedance matching. As I begin to tune that, I'll be tuning these three cavities, moving these three screws in and out, using a small screwdriver, and being careful not to break the little brass. Uh, slots off that are in the end of the screw there. I detuned this uh, filter in advance of making this video and you can see three separate notches here and each of those notches are caused by one of these three cavities on the receive side. And as I slowly carefully turn that screw you can see the notch that is associated with the resonant frequency of that cavity moving on the display. And I'm going to move that towards the center frequency. Move on to the next screw. You can see that this notch appears to be associated with that cavity. Move that to the center frequency. And this last notch. You can see this notch is associated with that last cavity. Try to move that to the center. 
and just kind of roughing this in. And you'll notice I didn't normalize the tracking generator. Normalizing the tracking generator takes out a little bit of the variation uh, of the power output of the tracking generator to give you a nice flat line. At this point, that's not really important. I just want to rough tune it to get the uh, notches at the center of frequency, which in this case is 465.175, turn on a marker there, and we can read out our power level. Now I want to zoom in on that and get better detail, so I'm going to go ahead and take my span down to 1 megahertz. And I have kind of a lot of noise there, and I can uh, get a finer point on exactly where the center uh, frequency is tuned by reducing my resolution bandwidth again. That's about a one second sweep. That's not so slow that I can't still be able to tune that point. And the dip will be the lowest when they're all three tuned to just the uh, center frequency. that resolution bandwidth down again. Now that's 11 second sweep, but I don't mind waiting 11 seconds, maybe one time to see if the point is really at the center there. And I like the way that looks. If I go back to a uh, marker, I can see I'm at a minus 102 on that screen. Of course, we know this level isn't perfectly accurate because we haven't normalized the trace yet. But we'll get to that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a new center frequency in here of 460. 0.175 megahertz which is our receive frequency and take our span up to 5 megahertz and go to resolution bandwidth and increase that so I have a reasonable amount of sweep time here that's a half second and now I'll move my spectrum analyzer input over here to the transmit side we're going to notch the receive frequency out of the transmit side, including this impedance matching device back on this port. And taking a look at that trace, you can see the three notches that are created by the three cavities on this side of the duplexer. So our marker now will put to uh, 460.175 megahertz right at the center there, and go ahead and start tuning these three. right down to the center frequency and when they're all at the center that's when they'll have we'll have the most attenuation at that frequency a little patience to go back and forth on the three screws all right now I'm going to zoom in again by uh, taking my span down to one megahertz that point right in the very center. A little fine tuning, a little fine adjustments on the screws there. Go ahead and uh, take my resolution bandwidth down again. It's an 11 second sweep. Let's see if it's pointing right at the center frequency. Right down our marker. Minus 100 dBm. All right, I like the way that looks. I think I've tuned those uh, exactly to the frequency that I like. Now I'm going to set this up for a little bit more accurate measurement and uh, take a screenshot and record the work that we've done and keep that information with this uh, duplexer, keep that on file. And uh, these can be tuned to different frequencies than what the manufacturers printed on there, and uh, they have a spec or a range of capability. So I'm going to put a center frequency in here, halfway between the transmit and receive, so it's a uh, uh, 462.5 megahertz. 
and put a span on here of say 10 megahertz now I'm going to uh, adjust my resolution bandwidth that's a hundred second sweep 10 second sweep is okay now I'm going to normalize my attack generator in other words I'm going to calibrate the power output level of our tracking generator so it's linear across the whole span. I'm going to do that by putting this barrel connector in here. Go to tracking generator and let's see check our amplitude. You know, we don't have any attenuation there. The tracking generator output power is zero. We're going to go to normalize and I'm going to leave this normalized at zero dB and 100% reference levels will make the line at the top. Go ahead and turn that normalization on. And it'll sweep one time to take a reference sample, then it'll sweep again as it normalizes. And when that little red indicator goes out, that means the normalization is done. Great, so we're at zero dB on our mark right there. And we said that was our center frequency. So we can go to marker one and put in uh, our low frequency, which is 460.175 megahertz. And I can remove the barrel connector and connect it back to the duplexer now. about a 10 second sweep showing our level right down here at minus 94.29 uh, maybe let it make another sweep now what we can do is we can go to trace and put that on freeze so we've frozen that first trace now we're going to go to the next trace trace type and turn it on So it's written over that same notch. Now I'll switch the uh, spectrum analyzer input over to the other port. And we'll let that make a nice trace. We can put a marker on that side, marker two. We have to tell it to be on Trace number two, well, marker two to normal, marker two to normal, and we'll make its frequency 465.175 megahertz. And there's our marker number two right there. We're on the 10 second sweep, same as the sweep we were on before. We can see both of our notches on here. Go back to the marker, put on the marker table. We can show marker one and marker two and the, uh, the value that we've got there. Somehow marker 1 is on the wrong thing. So let's go back to marker 1. Tell marker 1 to be on trace number 1. There we go. So we put our marker table on. We can see uh, both of our frequencies are recorded right here. With our levels are recorded right here. And we can go put a USB stick in here. Hit the print icon, give it a name, and click OK, and we'll save that uh, file for future reference. So this device is tuned up and ready to go. It only takes a few minutes if you have a nice tool like this. In another video I made uh, about a year ago, I showed how I did it on my older Motorola communication system service monitor. So take a look at that. That service monitor has a tracking generator on it, and it uh, does a good job of, of helping you to do these as well. And I'll be working on making another video this weekend. I'm going to tune up this bandpass filter we have right here. Three bandpass cavities. I'm going to tune those up. These are in the 150 megahertz range. And uh, 
check out a couple different tools or methods my I would like to tune those guys up. See you next time.